Hello and welcome to the Buy, Sell, Hold Spotlight presented by Sports Car Market Magazine. I'm Darren Roberge. Before we begin, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to join in the conversation and share your thoughts by leaving us a comment below. Our guest today is Alec Cardio of Cardiology. Welcome, Alec. Hi, Darren. How are you? And uh, hello, SCM fam. For those who may not be familiar with you, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and give us a little bit of background? Um, Alec Cartio, I'm the founder of Cartiology. It's a combination of uh, my last name and cars and uh, ology. And so uh, passionate uh, about cars and uh, as well as a uh, uh, 22 year veteran uh, filmmaker, professional filmmaker. So, how did you initially begin making movies? Uh, it's, I've been an artist pretty much uh, all my life, as, mo as much as I remember starting with uh, music at, at a young age. I had a grandfather who was a uh, concert pianist, and I guess that transferred over to me and my brother. We, uh, without being told, we started uh, messing around with keys. Um, that led to uh, other forms of art, eight years of being in different bands around uh, Northern uh, Europe, Sweden to be specific, Scandinavian countries. I was born and raised in Milan, but I was, uh, I, I lived for 13, 14 years as an immigrant in Europe and then later on 23 years in the U.S. So uh, art was a part of my life and then that led naturally after six, seven years to um, stage, theater and stage. And uh, I always have a lot of vision. Uh, in my head, uh, everything that I heard or saw correlated into uh, images in my head, and that became a natural transition to uh, from music to uh, learning about films, picking up cameras, uh, becoming a music video and commercial director, uh, and eventually, um, two decades later, um, classic car films. So, what initially made you sort of decide to dedicate your passion towards collector cars in general? Uh, same time as I had a uh, passion for art, um, I've, been, I've loved cars. As long as I remember my, uh, my father was, of course, the usual story goes, my dad or uncle, both my dad and uncle were car guys. I remember as a kid, I always saw my uh, uncle come down the street in his um, 70s Fiat with the loudest exhaust. He knew he was coming in, you know, and in my uh, original language, we call it uh, which means um, gas it, fart, and change. <laughs> you know, we, uh, it was fun, he would take us around. And my dad was a, an American muscle car kind of guy, importing into uh, then revolutionary uh, Iran uh, American muscle cars, which was very difficult. I remember uh, Trans Ams, uh, Camaros, uh, and uh, such cars. So you've done quite a few things uh, leading up to, to the launch of cardiology. Why don't you give us a little bit of background into, into your automotive experience? Well, uh, when I was shooting music videos professionally and internationally, uh, there were two things that came out of the income, supporting myself and my family, and then using any money I had extra to uh, buy cars, not knowing much, I would lose a lot of money. I would just buy them with heart and uh, changing them in Porsches, uh, Ferraris, a um, lot of, lot of BMWs. And BMW 8 Series was the E31 Classic one, not the new one. It was always my go-to passion car. So it was my number one car that I fell in love with before I had a license. I would only dream of it because it was such a huge, expensive car. BMWs were my thing. And uh, eventually that led to years of bonding with so many people all across uh, ages and, and life forms, making friends, going to car shows. I bought my first three uh, in the and and when could it be in, in, the, in the early 2000s and whatnot in my 20s. And that became my gateway into meeting so many new people. And uh, in my music videos and commercials, we were always using a ton of cars as well. It's kind of cool to have cars, but I was doing it extra. I was bringing cars to the desert, 57 Chevys, Ferrari 355s, and we haul several you know, cars to multiple locations, past the ones we have them just to have them as a cool playing ground for, for, uh, for our music videos. One day I saw um, 
an ad on Facebook just popped up. Petrolicious said, looking for uh, supervising producers and filmmakers. And a light bulb went into my head because I had long been uh, using this format. And a friend of mine, who's also one of my photographers and a 30 year back friend, he said, you know, you're doing all these things with cars, you know, films, why don't you see you know, what you can do? So I sent a quick email to Petalicious. Within hours, I was sitting at, at a cafe in Beverly Hills. The lady who uh, at the time uh, was running uh, Petalicious with uh, her husband. Um, and uh, that became sort of the platform for getting to a uh, classic car visual films. I like their style a lot. Yeah, we were able to do about 12 to 15 or so films together. Very successful films. I, uh, second I landed there, um, the company, um, BMW Classic called us in Germany and said, we're about to launch the new BMW 8 series. Can we do a classic BMW 8 series film? And then the owner says, like, he just showed up the biggest 8 series nut on the planet that you called me. Let's do this. So I called up on all my, uh, resources around me. World, we wanted to do, they wanted to do a regular BMW 850i film. And I said, no, 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 you want to do CSI film because that's what I had as well. That's the top of the range, not counting out units that would outside build. So uh, it became this big uh, project for the next two, three months. You know, I was putting together multiple people of owners, my own car, various backgrounds, and then we settled on the one. Uh, we got budget approved, and then we went ahead and did a uh, I was initially going to direct it, but then there was so much on the, on the plate. I was also producing a bunch of other films, but delicious. And they said, why don't we bring another director? You do uh, all the rest of the work. So I wrote the concept. I brought the people in. I, I found the car here in San, San Diego. We were going to film and it became the film that you, you saw the locations and whatnot around San Diego. And now it's had about 20, two, two and a half, three million views on, um, and Pet delicious channel. And that became the escalating jump for uh, the Kate series, which has appreciated a huge amount now. Apart from that, there were a bunch of other cars um, that I worked on, did fast car films uh, for Anteras, uh, a couple of Ferraris, a couple of muscle cars, which I have uh, as films produced on my channel through a finish. Your films definitely have tremendous depth to them, um, not only with uh, with Petrolicious, but on into your own stuff. I, I uh, have uh, repeatedly watched, they're in my favorites, your uh, Ferrari 330 video, as well as you did one with a Testarossa that was wonderful as well. Thank you. So you kind of alluded a little bit to what the pre-production of some of your 8 Series videos look like, but do you have a general format or a general approach that you normally take when going towards the pre-production side of the videos. I'm sure it's extensive. Uh, it is. It is. Our films are pretty much like many TV series, uh, if you will. Uh, some of them, I have three episodes on one BMW that I did. Uh, the Ferrari 330, the Maserati, the Miole, and, uh, and uh, the uh, Austin Healy. There were three episode films. And guys I worked with, and I told them, we need to do this properly if you want to work with me you have to do it like a true real filmmaker and not to mention that the photos have to be equally as high-end and gauze and beautiful because i come from that background and i know uh enticing and invoking uh, emotions but at the end of the day it has to have a good core story which is the owner's history and the car's history come together the passion comes together you've got a car that's 40 50 years old Let's bring that to, uh, into translation. Uh, so base core story, good cinematography, good filming, everything come together, entice a feeling in the buyers, obviously a good car, restored car, uh, rejuvenated car, fixed car, hundred percent turnkey. Uh, what led was, you know, after my journey in with a pet delicious, I thought to myself, okay, I have a CSR and I had a friend who had a BMW 850 CSR, which is a very famous purple. Daytona Violet CSI that I've sold three times since. He wanted to sell his car, but he is a former high patrol uh, officer, has no clue about photography or film material and whatnot, how to add that something. And he was getting really low ball offers on a car that is worth twice that at that time, at the time. And uh, I told him, you're not doing your car any justice. justice. You photographed it and found a garage door. You have a few sort of half baked, half lit 
uh, uh, photos on eBay. People are not going to be enticed. They're not going to know what it is you have. And that car is the only one in that car convention on the planet. Not like nothing else like it. It's Daytona Violet on Lotus White Daytona Interior Special Order 850 US Spec CSR. There's only one. There's only one. I said, nobody knows that. You need to. You need to. So give me a chance. To, let me add it advertise it and, and make that film and whatnot. I promise you, you're not going to uh, be glad. It's going to do much better than the other. So we made a deal. Obviously, I said, if it doesn't do well, well then what it does, here's this slide fee structure I'm listing. And he said, okay, let's go. We started. I traveled up to Santa California with my crew. We were there for a couple of days, filming, photographing, doing all the stuff that we did. We're dealing with other cars at a religious style or cartel style. And within days of it coming out, it sold for two and a half times of the value. He was getting offers in the 60s and I sold it for him in one third. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, it seems like the bar has definitely been raised in regards to sort of marketing materials, especially with the platforms like Bring a Trailer. You've got to have the high resolution images. You've got to have the video that, that backs up the quality of the car especially in a vehicle as as rare and as special as the one that you're alluding to here you really need to have those things and put forth the effort so it's yeah. good that that you, your services are available to people who are trying to sell cars like that in 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 a means of that nature and and trying to to maximize their profits because it really does make a difference so mm -hmm. moving ahead when you're in the editing booth uh it, there's a lot that goes into sort of picking your shots do you sort of pre-plan that stuff or do you set yourself up for success and then kind of pull from things that you know are going to work after the fact? No, there's no, there's no randomness. We don't just go out, film, and then come back and choose the best shot. So, uh, like writing film scripts and, and music video treatments, I write a treatment for every car uh, and that we're representing. The, the colors are obviously important to the background and role of what we're doing and, and uh, obviously time of day. So I write that and then I get my crew. We decide on a day. We know what it is we're going to be shooting. And usually about 80% of it ends up in uh, the can. And then we come back and we know we have a proper structure. We know all the, the music is kind of in my head. I've done the treatment to the music, the story. If the owner is going to be up here, I always ask the owners, are you comfortable being on camera talking about the car? They said, most of the people, most people said yes, because you're car lovers, car guys. A lot of, sometimes they said no, and I step in instead of them and I host the show myself. Uh, I have two series, which is classic car custodians, and I have art in motion. And I determine which one gets to me and which uh, category, bought, film it. Either I edit it or I have my editor, the editor, but even with my editor, I tell him the structure of what, I, what needs to be done. And I would say 90, 95% of it ends up in the actual edits. The rest, very minor, uh, ends up on the ton, uh, yeah, ton of itself. So you're efficient, which is definitely good. So from the perspective of a seller, what's the best way that they can prepare to work with somebody like you? Um, the car wants, needs to be 100% sorted because that's the basis on the car being uh, marketed probably. I spend months with my uh, sellers and, uh, and car owners uh, preparing cars. Uh, as we speak right now, I have about a dozen or so cars in various shops that are getting worked on to be just to be ready to go in front of camera mechanically and cosmetically because I want to represent finest cars. There's, I've had maybe one project car and all these uh, hundreds of cars that we have. That's number one that I tell them that. And then they send the car to me or if it's a collection of cars, we go to uh, them. Sometimes I've had a guy send 18 cars to me as well, but that's, that's rare because uh, he doesn't have anywhere for us to go to, to do our work. And thank God it actually came here because I noticed pretty much all the cars needed work. And you can imagine the scope of that project. Uh, so that's that. And then, uh, you know, be ready to be patient. My projects, my work takes time, but it yields very, very good results. It's each car makes a significant impact. And every time we have a car that goes for auction sales, 
And thank you to Bling Your Trailer for having an amazing platform that actually we can display all of your award, can have this huge community come together. And now we also have cars and bits and other places because places like eBay or Hemmings and other charities, but they're, they're just ghost towns. You can't display your work properly. I've had cars on uh, Hemmings where I had the film on there too. And then the guy comes in and says, hey, can you send me a startup video? Like, did you even see the film I has? <laughs> no, I, oh my God, there's a film there, you know? So the community of people talking and going back and forth and whatnot. And I've noticed some of the big traditional auction houses, uh, live auction houses are doing the same thing as well. They have these films playing uh, during the auction time or before auction time. And our absurdity is really good with that. So basically, we need a platform to showcase our work. And my clients need to be uh, patient, but they'll get good results um, because of the process. And, and thankfully, I only work. I've been able to be lucky to work with people who understand that. And they actually, when they see my work, they come to me because of what they saw on the movie trailer. And uh, right now I have four cars uh, on auction at the same time. And each car is bringing more clients with it. They, I, I'm getting messages daily saying, I love the way you represent cars, which you represent mine. I love the way. Or I get messages saying, what other cars do you have that we can look at? Uh, and uh, that's, that's confident. Let's see. Speaking of other things to look at, uh, you mentioned earlier uh, Classic Car Custodians. It's also a wonderful YouTube channel that you have. <laughs> so in addition to, to selling vehicles and helping sellers to, uh, to, to, to create uh, an event around the sale of their vehicle, why start a YouTube channel? Uh, it was actually in support of my auctions. It was a place for me to put the videos so they can go and see the films. Uh, if you notice, I never say any other films please uh, click the um, subscribe button. If you like this, like us and share. I never say that. I'm a true filmmaker, background filmmaking. I put those on there for showing the cars to people and for the auctions. It's not for the YouTube channel. It's just the platform that is on there. I made it look nicer with, with logos and, and whatnot, but my aim is not to get millions of views and monetizing from, um, from YouTube and whatnot because I might have about 1,000 or 2,000, 3,000 views, but those are very important, significant buyer views. That's what, that's what I do. Out of those, real buyers come out, uh, or real, real sellers. Sorry, I have a little bit of a mixed ac accent from uh, Iran and Syria. It, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating channel for sure. And it's, it's something that's definitely worth checking out that you can eat up a lot of time on. And if you're considering having a, a video made or you've got a high, a high end car that you're looking to sell, uh, with bring a trailer or one of the major auction houses, it's certainly a place to get an idea of, of what you're capable of. And it's, it's certainly extensive. It's a lot, uh, a lot of heart, a lot of soul in, in, in the videos that you make. So where do you plan to take all of this next? Uh, actually I have a lot of, uh, Ranch is coming out of the real thing right now because of the name and reputation has uh, grown globally. For over a year or two, I was being asked by European car collectors and European dealers and restorers. We are saying, hey, we love what you do over there. You're also European yourself in Sweden. And I speak eight languages. So that helps a lot uh, reaching out to uh, different uh, people around the world, all the way to even, uh, Malaysia and, and Dubai. We see that the market in the United States is really, really strong and we need a trusted source on, on that end, which should be our agent ref. So I got invited over to multiple countries. I did a tour of five, six countries on my last, uh, visit, which was, uh, late April and, uh, and signed a whole bunch of, uh, um, houses for sending and or shipping the cars over to the United States. So as we speak, I have several ships with, with multiple cars. Of, of, uh, I have a Colta Sosa that just showed up from Dubai. I have a couple of FTP CSRs and uh, M2 GT uh, E9 uh, Kruf and multiple others. Uh, there's a company called Pagoda Classics. And uh, so step-by-step news -step are coming. That's on Mexico, which is an international reach, imports, uh, registering in the U.S. and then auction off over here. 
Another very significant uh, branch that I'm doing is uh, we re- uh, it was TV shows. And I come from a TV, uh, you know, obviously from TV background. So in the past two years, I've been restoring and following, importing, restoring and following the journey of a significant car, which we have uh, made into the TV show pilot called Classic Car. Plus, there's nothing to tell. And uh, I have a um, showrunner from Fox who's working with me on this. And then uh, we are in the final stages of putting the pilot, which is an hour long together. It is quiet. And it's not much, uh, it's a bit different from the other TV shows that you've seen. It doesn't have the distorted rich guitar. I don't run around in shorts and tattoos and uh, <laughs> yell and fight and scream and all that stuff. And you don't, you don't see arguments and fights. It's all very cold and mellow, uh, you know, modern music. I, I wear a suit, I, I cook food, and things like that on it. And we follow the restoration and journey on the car. And it's going to be auctioned on Rain Trailer Live. And we're going to record that. It's going to be in the show. And the second episode will be making that waffles to come to life. We follow the life of the second the guy who bought the car and said, hey, what is he going to do? So I transfer my dream car to this dream car and we follow him. And then comes the episode three and four and whatnot. Get out of the Interesting stuff for sure. I would expect that you're going to start seeing a lot of business coming from uh, Europe and beyond due to the uh, strength of the dollar and the strength of the collector car market here in uh, the yeah. U.S. So that's exciting stuff indeed. Uh, but more importantly, it's that bridge of, of trust that they see. They need trusted sources out there. You can't just call anybody on a different continent and send your car out. They're, people are sending their cars and with titles <laughs> to me, and I register them in my company name here. I mean, that that requires massive trust in somebody who, and not a cent or a dollar has ever gone lost between any of me or my partners and mess with chocolate. Otherwise, I mean, you can send me a it could be gone. It could be gone. Okay, Alec, you're out in the field a lot. You're uh, you're in the marketplace. You're you're buying and selling cars. So we're going to ask you here, uh, your choice, uh, one car to buy, one car to sell, one car to hold. Well, as we know, there's thousands of cars and models. It's, it's really hard to narrow it down. There's so many you could. Uh, starting with Void, uh, when I met you at, in, in Monterey, I said all three cars of the same brand, but I'm going to change that for now because I want to reach a wider audience. But I would say right now, buying would be great with the Porsche 996s and the 997s at the moment, because they're still affordable. They still haven't shot into the stratosphere, except for the Porsche 911 turbos and the and, uh, uh, the GT3s and whatnot, but 993 has already flown up. Uh, a car you could buy for 70 grand two years ago is now 160. Uh, so I would say 9 and 6 and 9 and 7s are still affordable and can do, and, and I know they will. I don't care about the one at uh, and stuff, it's going to appreciate 9 and uh, So those are the ones I would say buy and hold them for the next four or five years because they're going to. Uh, Appreciate. Obviously, you always have to buy with love. Uh, you shouldn't just buy it because of the that because that love will, will uh, appreciate all the, the time. Uh, as far as uh, holding, if you own a car at the moment, I would say hold on to your BMW 8 Series cars that you have bought for the past few years or currently buying, whether it's an 840, 850, or, or CSI. Hold them now more years if you want, even though I, I represent many of them all the time, because they are still on the rise, especially in the 40s and 850 automatics and weight stoves. I also have a campaign called Embrace Automatics. They, they're going to start appreciating a lot more and over time, uh, more and more people will want to buy them. Naturally, with the next generation of people who drive less uh, manuals, the automatics are going to be more sought after, and the aging clientele will also embrace that. Because many people are not going to want uh, to drive nine new cars and want to enjoy. As far as selling, well, the 993s are <laughs> great to sell at the moment. You should definitely uh, get into, uh, if you've had them for years, 
they're skyrocket. They have skyrocketed. And, and I would say, if I allowed to say one more card, the supers are doing incredibly well. Those should be cards that you might want to consider. So, yeah, I think the uh, the future of JDM is very bright, no doubt. And uh, we've said a lot of times that we think that the nine nine threes are at the top of the market, but they keep uh, they keep on chugging. So it's it's you know great. Great card to sell. Wars are incredibly. I'm just thinking at the moment, which is like amethyst uh, purple or something. It's all the way up to thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, it, they're they're amazing little cars for sure. Yeah. Uh, any final thoughts? Well, um, I wanted to know if all my friends and and um, future clients and current clients to know that I do this with pure love and passion. From the art that I do uh, and and. Um, Love the cars. I'm, I'm not a car salesman. I'm, I'm an enthusiast. Uh, I'm an artist and I blend these see together and I put a tremendous amount of uh, time and work into each presentation. So I spend a lot of time and money into perfecting the art and craft them. We have a really good feature ahead of us, await the European and global market and, 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 and the TV shows that are coming. So it's, it's a language of love that I do. I, I don't have, I'm not a car salesman. All respect to them, those great people. I'm not saying that, but don't see me as a person. I'm saying you as a fellow business because I, I own a ton of these cars myself. I buy them, sell them, drive them, enjoy them. I have a bunch of them. It's like I put my money in my mouth. It's, it's up like I'm telling you, hey, buy or sell your car. I own them too. It's all about loving what you do for sure. That's the most important part. Not to mention that the car world is a hugely amazing. I'm very surprised at how many good people are, are in this business. I'm very, very surprised. You can spot the bad apples very quickly. You develop a good eye for, for who the good people are, which is a vast majority, vast majority. Yeah, we're lucky to be in this business for sure. Yeah. I would like to thank my guest, uh, Alec Cardio, for joining us today. To learn more about anything that we discussed here, be sure to pick up the latest issue of Sports Car Market Magazine by clicking the link in the video description down below. As a reminder, if you enjoyed this content, please take a moment to like this video and share it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay on top of future episodes. I'm Darren Roberge. Thank you for joining us on the Buy, Sell, Hold Spotlight.